This is a continuation of the Add Ears, Feet and Hands to our Animated Character tutorial, but you can apply the technique shown to our Animated Character at an earlier or later stage of development, such as the Add a Simple Face to our Animated Character tutorial, or to any other Animated Character that would benefit from adding or inserting extra bones or from improving joint animation by specifying control points to rotate half the amount. Switch to modeling mode and click the bunny to show all the control points. Switch to skeleton edit mode and select the right knee joint. It doesn't matter which knee you choose, but if you work with the opposite joint shown in this tutorial, interpret left and right as opposite to what is shown in the tutorial. To enable click to add new bones, click this button. Click here to add the ankle bones. From a side view, click here to add the bones for the toes. In the scene tree window, name the new bones for the right leg R underbar ankle and R underbar toes. Because the bones would have been added in mirror mode, the left bones are automatically named L underbar ankle and L underbar toes. With our new bones added and named, let's now insert extra control rings into our legs. Select the control points for only the right leg to make it easier to apply the ownership. Ideally, we want a control ring to line up for each joint. Apply ownership for the legs so that each bone owns its portion of control points as shown. If we look at how the knees bend from a side view, we can see how they would greatly be improved if the rings that line up with the knees bent only half the amount. To specify this, first reset the default pose by switching to modeling mode and then switch into color coded ownership mode. Select the right knee and click this insert button. We'll now see a green tab with a weight field set to 0.5, which is what specifies rotate half the amount. If we click on the red tab, we see the weight is set to 1, which specifies rotate the full amount. To specify the control points that line up for the knee joint, rotate half the amount, select the green tab and then apply the ownership using the rectangle selection tool. There, that looks better. If we wish, we can apply the ownership to the ankles and toes much the same as we did for the knees by specifying the rings that line up with these joints rotate half the amount. Don't forget to copy the first frame and paste it to the last so that the animation loops smoothly. Now let's insert the collar bones. Toggle into this mode so that we won't move any descendant bones when dragging. This is an ideal location for a spine bone to have collar bones branching from it, but if we were to insert a new bone here, we would have to transplant the shoulder bones. So instead, let's drag this bone up and insert a new bone below to replace it. Name the new bone Thorax Zero and modify the name for the bone we dragged above to Thorax 1. With Thorax 1 selected, click here to insert the collar bones. Name the right collar bone, R underbar collar, and press enter. I feel the shoulders are rather wide, so I'm going to drag them in a bit. And I feel this is a better location for the elbows. Add the wrists by clicking here, and name the right wrist, R underbar wrist. 
Now in modeling mode, let's align the rings for the elbow and shoulder joints and insert some extra rings like so. Oh, I want an extra ring in the neck. So back into skeleton edit mode, insert and name neck one. In modeling mode, add the extra ring for neck one. Switch into color coded control points mode, select the head bone and reapply ownership to all the head points. Select neck one and apply ownership to its ring of points. Reapply ownership to neck zero's points. Select the right collar and apply ownership to these points. Select the right shoulder and click the control panel insert button. With the green tab selected, apply ownership to the first ring of points for the shoulder to specify they rotate half the amount and then click on the red tab and apply ownership to the rest of the rings in the forearm to specify they rotate the full amount for the shoulder joints and apply ownership much the same way for the elbows and wrists. It animates okay like this, but let's now take advantage of the collarbones. By animating the collarbones, we don't have to bend the shoulders to such extremes, which to my eyes looks like an improvement. Let's now bend the wrists. Perhaps we don't need to bend the wrists for a star jump, but by animating these extra joints, even if only a tiny amount, it will make our character look less wooden. Likewise, by animating all of the joints in the spine, this can help make our character look more alive.